Hey guys, how's it going? This is Brandon again with Emax USA. Here to my right we have JD Moore with again Emax USA. Coming to you from Southern California and today we're going to be doing some build videos with the F4 Magnum all-in-one modular power system. JD, tell me what you're going to be building today. I'm going to be putting it on a Hyperlite Floss which is probably uh, one of the lightest builds on the current market, Stretch X 5 inch. Great, what motors are you going to be running with your Magnum? Uh, with a uh, 2306, 2750 Emax. And how about your FPV camera? FPV, uh, today we'll use this nice little orange camera called the Run Cam Swift. Great, and just so they know, what did you need to get other than the Magnum to complete this build? Um, basically the frame, the motors, the camera, I think that's about it, then the Magnum. Fantastic. Me, myself, today I'm going to be building this X-Hover Win 5-inch frame, and I also am going to be running the 2306-2750 kV motors and a run cam Swift. Let's go ahead and get started. Pretty much almost the same build, except yeah, the frame. Yeah, pretty much exactly the same build except for the frame. So we'll have to do a race after this to see oh. who's going to win. That's the real test. It's not all in the frames. So go ahead and get started, JD. What are you going to start doing first? Um, basically, I'm going to start off by uh, placing the bottom part, the ESC part, onto the frame and getting that ready to solder up. All right. While you go ahead and do that, since I kind of cheated a little bit, I'm one step ahead. I already have a little bit of standoffs here. So you just go ahead after you mount some standoffs. Depending on what kind of standoffs you want to use, on the bottom of the whole stack really depends on your frame. So these are the standoffs that came with this frame for a, you know like a different kind of PDB or flight controller. So I'm just gonna set this right here onto the frame. And what this will allow me to do with this much clearance underneath the board is put the LiPo strap. Since this is a bottom battery frame, you do wanna make sure that you have enough room for your LiPo strap. Enough room also so that it could slide around in a crash and also isn't the board is impressed too hard on the strap because if the lipo is to move around in a hard crash it could damage maybe a component or hurt the, P hurt the PCB board so you want to make sure you have a nice amount of clearance under the board for your lipo strap. So I have that mounted up and next what I'll do is I'll go ahead and get my motors mounted up and I'm gonna go ahead and start tinning the ESC board and then solder up these motor wires and get the power connectors soldered up. I love the smell don't smell it. <laughs> Solder in the morning. Just go ahead and apply heat to the pad and then just bring the solder to it and it'll tin right up. I'll just get my wire hot there and just drop it right in. Pump around a little bit. There you go. All right, so what I'm doing here is that after I installed the flight controller for the Magnum, is uh, especially for the floss design, uh, there's only a single standoff in the back versus four conventionals. So what I usually do, because the power leads are so close to the standoff, in case there's, there's distance, um, by probably about a millimeter and a half to two millimeters, but if any instance where that standoff gets bent, I want to make sure that it does not short out. So what I'll usually do is take a little piece of heat shrink, and I'll uh, heat shrink this on here and then put the standoff right where the heat shrink is. So if anything were to happen, it would just not even short it out. And as you can see, the heat shrink will, in case the standoff goes that way, won't go into or won't short out with the aluminum uh, standoff. So what I'm going to do is with the Magnum F4 is place it on the standoffs. And as you can see, there's a plug right here and a plug right here. So uh, what it does is that it has all the motor signals, the current sensor, and the power to power the flight controller all through this plug right here. So I went ahead and soldered all my motor wires on as you see here. Make sure everything's all nice and clean. Checked right here, it is a little tight on the power so make sure that before you ever plug in a LiPo that you're not touching anything here. Uh, good practice is to use a current meter to make sure that you're not shorting anything out. So I have my standoffs in place. These are the six millimeter standoffs that come inside the Magnum kit and all the motors wired up. So you could just go ahead and take your flight controller, line the pin side up right here with the pins. 
just make sure it's uh, seated correctly on the standoffs and it, the pins are seated uh, correctly before uh, applying it downwards. Just make sure you don't bend any of the pins. So that's why I kind of do these loose at first, just so I have some wiggle room to get it on the pins. If they're tight and they're off center just slightly, that could uh, disrupt getting it inside the pin area. Oh, clicks right in. And we're ready to go on that. So I'll just put some uh, nuts right here onto the flight controller so it's uh, cinched in place. All right, so here I have all my motor wires soldered on. I went ahead and placed the Magnum flight controller on top of the ESCs. The pins are nice and intact right there. And look at how clean it's looking already. All I have left to do is solder up my FPV camera right here, connect my UFL, solder my receiver, and we'll be good to go. So one of the things I'm gonna use for this build to make it super light and keep it clean is I'm gonna use the whip antenna. I've already done it with the first build and it's been working really well. You don't want to burn that. Actually, a really tight fit UFL, as you can see, it snapped in really tight. That's actually a really good thing. Um, sometimes what I'll do on, on later builds is I'll use a little bit of hot glue or electrical uh, liquid tape to kind of hold that down just so it doesn't pop out of place in a hard crash or anything like that. Now I'm kind of just bend this over. Because what's nice about the floss is that when you put the top lid on, you can just zip tie it underneath right there. Have it stick out just a little bit. All right, one last thing I want to do is uh, the FR Sky actually comes separate from the Magnum out of the box. Um, just because uh, we know other people use other uh, receivers. So if you have another receiver option that you want to use, either be it um, Spectrum or um, F, was it FL Sky? Fly Sky. Fly Sky. Uh, even Taba. Futaba. So if you actually notice down here, this is where you have your uh, UARTs for your five volt and uh, also where you can plug in your receiver for signal, all these pads down here. Or you could still use the one from here. This doesn't mean that you have to use the FR Sky receiver, but here's where you could get a uh, power signal and ground or down here. And Spectrum users can get the 3.3 signal on the ground from right there. Doesn't take much. On there. If you have any solder blobs that you think of, you go. Just go there and clean them up. That should be good. This one actually looking pretty clean, JD. There's a few things I would have done cleaner. Oh, I'm just kidding, JD. Yeah. But it actually looks really, really nice. Look at that. It does sit a little tall in this frame. To the eye but from what i've seen online of the floss builds pretty much everyone who has a receiver in vtx are already like touching this top plate here so seeing that you do have a good amount of space and you can see here how much space you have and also underneath i'd say that's perfect and look how clean it looks too very simple build our build here today is obviously taking a little longer because we're talking looking at each other's builds but when you're by yourself building up a quad with the magnum i think you can get it done in 30 minutes or less to be honest especially on a frame like this or especially like on a unibody frame like a qavx for example that would build very very quickly with the magnum but it's looking really really nice jd good job so this is what you're not supposed to do normally get a smoke stopper check with the wall I just uh, say a little prayer and I'll plug it in. I guess, I guess somebody was happy with me today. There you go. Just set it up on your beta flight on your computer. Get those motors spinning and get it flying. So what we'll do is we'll take it on scale. I don't know if the scale uh, registers whatever it's going to end up to being. It's a really small scale. Let's we'll see what it comes out to. I'll put the XT60 somewhere so it's not hitting the ground. Uh, actually, what we'll do is lay out the battery. What's the battery way at? 177. We'll zero that out. We'll put the quad on top. And without props, what are we looking at here? 254. That's pretty impressive. I do say so myself. Again, I would do a couple other things to kind of lighten it up a little bit. But other than that, just for a straight build, I think that's pretty solid. All right, guys. So I went ahead and finished uh, my five-inch wind frame from X Hover with uh, Magnum. 
2307 50s and I was originally going to do a pagoda but he convinced me talking all about his super light so I decided to go ahead and do a little whip and try it out see if I notice any difference in the video a uh, good test that I'm going to do for myself is I'll start with the whip try it out then put on the pagoda see if I notice a difference or not I mean uh, this is specifically for racing around the track if this was a freestyle build I definitely would put the pagoda on just to have better penetration through objects such as trees and things like that but just feeling the weight this is probably going to be one of the lightest builds I've flown uh, for racing I never use a GoPro so this is just going to be a fantastic weight this is also going to be one of my first times trying stretched X so I'm pretty excited to see what that feels like I don't know JD knows a little bit more about stretch X than I do but I'm excited to learn see how it feels I'm loving absolutely loving how clean everything sits inside of this frame with that Magnum look at that I'm super impressed I'm happy that it's done and I'm happy to get flying. But right now, first is I'm gonna plug it in to make sure I didn't mess anything up. So, five, four, three, two, one. And we're good to go. You'll notice so the first time you plug it in, the beeper is going off. The reason the beeper is going off is because you haven't bound anything to your antenna, you haven't set up your modes. So if your beeper is going off, don't worry about that. So one thing really impressive I wanna show, I'm completely done with the build. Keep in mind guys, what does your build table look like after you do a build with four individual ESCs, a PDB, a flight controller, all the motor wires, all the FPV wires for the VTX, the camera? Normally you have just a mass of trash. This is literally all what's left over after building the Magnum. That's it. And the plastic baggie that the standoffs came in. That's the only trash I have left over. Me, not trying to say I'm OCD, some people that know me might say I'm a little OCD, but this makes me very happy. For those that uh, don't have much time to build, you don't want to tinker with new stuff, I definitely recommend the Magnum. It takes you about 30 minutes or less to build a quad, depending on what frame you're looking at. A little cleanup time, more flying time. Thanks for watching, guys. As always, if you need any assistance, please visit emax-usa.com to create a support ticket under the service tab. If you want to contact us through Facebook, it's emax-usa, Instagram, emax-usa. And for all our international customers, please visit emaxmodel.com to create a support ticket. Thanks for watching, guys. JD, I'll give you some time to thank everyone for watching you build a quad, too. I'm just kidding. Let's go fly, JD. <laughs> yeah, let's go fly.